I was putting together a budget build the other day and didn't want to use the included AMD box cooler that comes with the CPU. I wanted to go for something a little bit nicer, so I came across this $20 air cooler from ID Coin. Now you might be wondering, at such an affordable price point, is this thing worth the hype? Well, that's why I bought one, to find out. The official name of this cooler is the SE214XT ARGB from ID Cooling. It's a CPU tower air cooler that has four heat pipes, a 120mm PWM controlled ARGB fan, and it doesn't break the bank. I'm going to do a quick unboxing so you can see what ID Cooling offers for only $20 US. The box has no frills and is simple, just the way I like it. They include a basic installation guide with labeled pictures. Looks easy to understand. The cooler is sandwiched between the fan covered in one cardboard sleeve and the accessory bag in the other. Included in the bag is two sets of fan brackets, the plastic Intel backplate, which has slide adjustable mounting points for different sockets, a small tube of thermal paste, the mounting brackets, which are universal for both Intel and AMD, and both Intel and AMD mounting hardware in separate baggies. The fan is nicely packaged in a cardboard sleeve and plastic bag. There are two connectors coming off it one 5 volt addressable RGB connector, and one PWM fan connector with quite long cable lengths, I might add. Let's look at the cooler's design. The 214 XT comes with a sleek black look thanks to a plastic cover on top of the cooler. It has sort of a brushed effect that looks nice, but feels cheap if I'm being honest. It's nice they included it at this price point though. The base of the cooler has captive spring-loaded screws for mounting, which is also a nice touch. Can't forget to remove the sticker before installing. Speaking of installation, this cooler has excellent CPU socket compatibility. It can be used with LGA 1700, 1200, and the 1150 series socket, as well as AMD's AM5 and AM4. Installation is fairly straightforward with a simple mounting system and clear instructions. Now, if you're not interested in the installation difficulty, feel free to use the timestamps below to skip ahead to the thermal testing. Go ahead, I don't mind. That's why we have them. For AMD's AM4 mounting solution, you'll need to first remove the brackets currently installed on your motherboard. Then install the four red plastic risers. You'll also screw down the brackets included with the cooler. These are universal brackets. The AMD install has the curve facing inward toward the socket. After the brackets are secure, apply your thermal paste. Now I use a graphite thermal pad for all testing instead of paste. This keeps everything consistent and the pad doesn't affect temperatures more than a degree or two. So if anything, you might see better temperatures with your testing at home. Once the cooler is mounted, tightening a few turns on each side, alternate back and forth, the spring-loaded screws will stop spinning on their own. The last thing you'll need to do is attach the fan using two of the silver clips. These can be a pain if you've never done this before. Just use this video as a guide if you get stuck. Intel installation is not much different. Now, Intel doesn't come with mounting brackets pre-installed onto their motherboard, so you'll need to use the included backplate. Set the sliders to align with your motherboard's holes and install the risers just like you did for AMD's motherboard installation. For LGA 1700, you'll use the textured gray risers, and for LGA 1200 or 1150 series, you use the smooth gray ones. Again, screw down the brackets. However, for Intel, the curve faces away from the socket. Unfortunately, I don't have any AM5 motherboards for install, so I can't speak to the ease or difficulty of the installation onto the AM5 platform. What sets this air cooler apart is its performance. Now I tested this with various CPU workloads and it handled those temperatures with ease. Now I only used a 65 watt TDP CPU because honestly, that's what I feel like this cooler should be used for. The CPU I used for testing was AMD's Ryzen 7 5700G. It's an eight core 16 thread chip with integrated Radeon graphics that boosts to 4.6 gigahertz. Now this CPU comes included with AMD's Wraith Stealth option. I'll also leave a parts list below in the description if you want to check out the rest of the components used on my test bench. Included in my chart are three other CPU air coolers I had on hand for comparison. Naturally, I used AMD's Wraith Stealth Box Cooler, AMD's Wraith Prism Cooler that's included with their non-X variants of their new Ryzen 7000 CPUs, and I also threw in Deepcool's AK500 Zero Dark. The first test I decided to run was Cinebench R23. This is a CPU stress test that utilizes all cores to 100%, so it causes a little bit of heat. The results compared to the Wraith Stealth were incredible. 
These are the highest temps I observed during a 10 minute run of R23. The 214 XT only saw a high of 68 degrees Celsius, while the Wraith Stealth hit a max of 90 degrees. The second test was the Blender benchmark. These are again the highest temperature results for each run. You can see the 214 XT coming in much lower than the Wraith Stealth in this test as well. Considering the Deep Cool AK500 is about $30 more than the 214 XT, but was only about three degrees cooler, I'd say that's an impressive showing for ID cooling. The last benchmark I completed was Unigen Heaven. I use this to simulate a gaming load, and this is the kind of temps you can expect from your system while playing your favorite titles. The 214 XT was right on par with the Wraith Prism at 57C, and again displayed much better temps than the Wraith Stealth hitting 72 degrees. Now, of course, when we talk about performance, we have to talk about noise. Fortunately, with the 214 XT, you won't be bothered by a loud fan, as it runs quiet even at high speeds. Give it a listen. For those of you considering AMD's Wraith Prism Cooler as an upgrade, you may want to rethink that. It was obnoxiously loud, while the 214 XT was whisper quiet. Overall, I highly recommend the ID Cooling SE 214 XT air cooler for those who are on a budget, but still want an excellent CPU cooler. It's easy to install, performs well, and has a sleek design. Oh, and don't forget, it only costs $20 US. Now that I look back on this, this whole thing kind of sounds like an ad for ID Cooling, and I realize it looks like that but they didn't send me this. I bought this with my own money. It only cost me $20, and I think I got a lot of performance and features for 20 bucks. So that's why I'm so excited about it, and I just really wanted to share it with you and make a full content piece on this, because if you're looking for a solution to AMD's box cooler, or maybe Intel's RM1 or RS1, those new box coolers they have, the ID Cooling 214 XT is definitely a viable solution or upgrade over that. I hope my review helped you in your search for a better cooling solution. And if it did, don't forget to give it a like down below because I don't get paid by sponsors or brand deals or anything. You coming back and watching my content is really what keeps this channel going. So all I ask is for a simple like, tell your friends, and keep coming back for more PC-related content. And as I always say, I'm Danny with Danny's Tech Channel, and I'll see you in the next one.